about uh, more than 40 years ago, I was involved in an organization called the New Games Foundation, and I wanted to tell you about something that I experienced that changed my life and, and redirected my career for quite some time. The New Games Foundation was this organization that would do large-scale public events. There's a long history of it, and you can find it on my sites, either deepfund.com or, deepfund or a playful path. And I had this one experience when probably I was there, I think the second time they had a festival. And they had maybe like 5,000 people. A lot of the games they played were cooperative, some were competitive. It didn't really matter because the focus of the games was that everybody could play. Anybody who wanted to play could play. If the game seemed too hard, well, we changed the rules, we make the thing larger or the thing smaller or we get another ball in or whatever. Find some way that everybody could play. That was the basic, the basic assumption of the event because what we were trying to do was to build community. So uh, what happened as we continued was that there was this one game called People Pass. Now People Pass is really a kind of silly cooperative game uh, that has no actual purpose in life other than to give each other like a little thrill ride. Uh, we would stand in two lines, uh, parallel, two parallel lines, and we'd have um, the first person in the line, we would pick that person up and raise that person overhead and then pass that person all the way down the line. And of course, it was just so cool. Now, now you know, it could have gotten a little bit too intimate, but people at that time, I guess by the time they got to play it, there was a sense that we take care of each other. You know, we're not there to, to hurt each other or abuse each other. You know, we would touch each other, but we would be gentle with it and make sure that the people who we were touching felt safe. And... There was, I was in the, I was helping to facilitate the game, and this one guy came, and he was in a wheelchair. And, and we took him out of the wheelchair and passed him overhead. Uh, and while somebody else, one of the facilitators came and moved his wheelchair to the end of the line so that when he got back to the end of the line, he could sit back in his wheelchair. Well, first of all, the look on that guy's face was just, um, he was, I mean, literally transported. And at the same time, he was just filled with this glee and laughter. And, uh, it was just, it was beautiful. And for me, that, as, it was the first time I had ever put my hands on somebody in a wheelchair. And helped him out. I mean, it was the first time. And that was that was the realization that led me to everything since, because it was so beautiful, and it was something that I could help happen, and it was something that seemed to happen so naturally that people seemed to be so ready to do that, just given the permission, given the opportunity given a sense of playfulness and a sense of, oh, the whole purpose is just to have fun, that they could create community, a kind of community where everybody, everybody cared about each other, a caring, inclusive community. And I think that's really, that's really the point here. Because if we can, allow me to explain my shirt. You see, there's a me here and a we and the me, the we is like the shadow of the me. But actually, together, they form a new thing, which is, well, kind of looks like a butterfly. I know, that's, I don't mean to get too poetic, but that's kind of the idea, that if, if, if we are ready to create a community that supports each individual in the community, 
we can create something truly beautiful. We can create what I call a play community, a community that is focused on inclusion. 